All right, lads, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a look at the T-80UD. This is basically a T-80U, but with a diesel engine. The tank also lacks a thermal imager and is only limited to 3BM42 Mango. The same round fired by the also battery-rating 10.0 T-72 AV Terms, the other Rank 7 main battle tank premium. So you are kind of spoiled for choice at the minute if you are a Soviet main. But what just exactly is the T-80UD? Well, the original T-80s were using a gas turbine engine basically taken straight out of a helicopter. Gas turbines have quite a lot of advantages over regular diesels. They're a lot smaller but produce just as much power if not more. But the downside is that they're an absolute maintenance hell and they have a very high fuel consumption rate. And due to the Soviet economy, even at the best of times, being suboptimal, at least after the oil price crash, which kind of led to the downfall of the Soviet Union. Having lots of incredibly expensive tanks with very maintenance heavy engines just wasn't really seen as something that could be tolerated by the Soviet high command. And the gas turbine engines were seen as a huge liability in the case of a war. So in the 1970s, they decided to put a diesel engine in a T-80U. This was finalized in around 1985 with it entering mass production in Ukraine in around 1987. The numbers of T-80UDs built is disputed, but it is at least over 500. But due to the Russian economy being even worse than the Soviet one, especially in the mid-1990s, it was decided to sell quite a lot of these tanks for export. Over 300 were sold to Pakistan, and 50 were retained by the Ukrainian armed forces, with the remainder of the vehicles being retained by the Russian Federation, but after the 2014 Boogaloo into Crimea, the Ukrainian government mysteriously refused to stop selling them spare parts. So they're almost certainly being stored in a field, probably rusting away. But in War Thunder, the T-80UD is a Rank 7 battery rating 10.0 premium main battle tank, obviously located in the Soviet tech tree. It can be bought for Golden Eagles for the price of 9,270 Golden Eagles. Being a rank 7 premium, it can grind out the current top tier, the 8th rank of the Soviet tech tree, but there are only 3 vehicles here, so it is quite a big investment just to get 3 extra vehicles. There are also 2 other premiums available in rank 7, the 2S38 and the T72AV, both of which are the same battery rating and are arguably just as powerful in certain situations. Battle rating 10.0 is also incredibly strong for the Soviets at the minute, especially if you own the two other premiums. As you can see, I've got a nice mix of main battle tanks, light tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, anti-aircraft vehicles, and then a helicopter and a plane for cast duties. While the tank is battle rating 10.0 and does have a fantastic 10.0 lineup, you could also up tier it to 10.3 and take along the T-80B. This is essentially a T-80U, but with a much less advanced turret with less thick armor. In terms of closer support, you are quite spoiled for choice to be honest. My two picks, however, would be the SU-7 BKL. This is obviously supersonic, but does get a wide variety of Urta ground munitions, most notably the S-24s and the four 500 kilo bombs. Combined with the high speed and the CCIP, it allows you to zoom into an area, drop a bomb, get a few kills, and then go back to repair. If you're more of a subsonic chad, you can also get the SU-25, either the tech tree or the premium variant. As you are probably well aware, the SU-25s are absolutely brimmed to the teeth with firepower. You can really take your pick in what you want to get kills with. I'd recommend the S-25 Zeros though, as they are highly effective even with a near miss. You can also take out several helicopters if you prefer rotary wing aircraft. You've got the MI-8, the modernized one. You've also got the MI-24P and you've even got the premium MI-24D if you have it unlocked. So the lineup for the T-80UD is fantastic. You've got two other incredibly good premiums. You've got good light tanks and you've got fantastic closer support capabilities. But should you actually buy the T-80UD? Well, that's what we're going to try and answer in this video, lads. If you enjoyed the content and want to see more, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. And finally, let's get on with the video.
All right, lads, welcome back. So as always, we're going to start with the mobility. And straight away, the T80UD is nowhere near as powerful as the T80U, at least when it comes to its mobility. If we compare both the T80UD and the T80U, the T80UD has an engine producing 1,000 horsepower and weighs 46 tons, giving it a power to weight ratio of 21.7 horsepower per ton. The T80U, on the other hand, has nearly 25% more horsepower than the T80UD, coming in at 1,250 horsepower. Combined with the same weight of 46 tons, it gives us a power to weight ratio of 27.2 horsepower per ton. I'm not going to lie, you are definitely going to feel the hit to the performance. The T80UD does feel a little bit sluggish. It kind of feels like a T72. I guess it does use the same engine and transmission. So you are going to be feeling a little bit sluggish. Compared to the T72 AV terms though, one of the premiums that the UD is competing against, the T72 only produces 780 horsepower, giving it a power to weight ratio of 18.1 horsepower per ton. Like the terms, the T80 UD also only has a reverse speed of 5 km per hour, which is almost certainly going to be the thing that gets you killed the most in this tank. You just can't reverse back around a corner, you can't reverse over a hill, it leaves you incredibly vulnerable if you make a mistake. So while we can say that the T80 UD's mobility is certainly better than the terms, pretty much anything has better mobility than the terms. And I wouldn't say that the mobility is a strong point of this premium. It just kind of feels slow and heavy and bulky, kind of like some of the early Chinese and Russian MBTs. I wouldn't mark the T80 U down for its mobility, but I'm not going to say it is a strength either. We then move on to the survivability and the armor protection, which is arguably the strongest point of the T80UD. As I said earlier, the T80U is battery rating 11.3, and it has that battery rating for a reason. The T80U has fantastic armor, and combined with an incredibly good mobility, it made it incredibly hard to kill in a brawling scenario. T80U players could rush around a corner, and most American players would rush the shot, and then go and mauled in the forums after they got killed. The T-80U did have very large weak spots, which are the same for every other Soviet tank, but in the heat of a moment, actually aiming at these weak spots and penetrating was quite hard. And it's the same for the T-80UD to a lesser extent. As we saw in the mobility section, you certainly aren't going to be coming around corners screaming in hot and rubbing off your tire tracks. The tank just isn't fast enough to do that. But against some of the newer players and against a lot of the premium players because they don't know what they're doing anymore, you are going to be able to bounce quite a lot of shots. Well, let's not jump the gun too quickly. Let's first take a look at this cutaway. We can see that the tank has a crew of three men, a driver in the front, and their gunner and commander located in the turret. Moving on to this next image, we can see that the tank has composite armor, basically fully enclosing the frontal aspect of the tank. This composite armor is incredibly thick, and it will not be penetrated by things like DM33, or an equivalent round. This is big boy composite armor schemes. You'll also notice that the turret mantlet is incredibly narrow, meaning that you don't really have the traditional weak spot of the gun breach. The UD is also plastered in Contact 5 integrated explosive reactive armor. This gives you 120 millimeters of additional protection against kinetic energy projectors like APFSDS and 450 millimeters of protection against chemical rounds such as anti-tank guided missiles and high explosive anti-tank fin stabilized. Taking a look at this image, we can see that from the top down or the bird aspect shot, we can see that the crew members in the turret are basically sat right on top of the ammunition. Now this is true for basically every Soviet tank post the T-64 and it is a huge weak spot for the vehicle, making it incredibly vulnerable to any round that impacts and penetrates the tank. So while both the T-80U and the UD are incredibly strong from the frontal aspect, from the side, they are incredibly um, reactive to rounds, I guess. A penetrating shot to the side of the hole is going to send you back to the hangar incredibly quickly. So I would not recommend side scraping or exposing your side to the enemy. As you can see from a side profile shot as well, the tank is basically just one big ammo rack. So any round hitting anywhere really, Unless your enemy's got terrible aim, you are going to be getting exploded. But what can the tank's armor actually do to protect us? Well, if we take a look at an early APFSDS round like the DM-23, found on the very spammed out Leopard Panzer Battalion 123, 
We can see that it is basically only able to penetrate us on the driver's part vision slot and the lower frontal plate. Stepping things up a bit to the DM33 found on the Type 90, and I apologize that the Gaijin's green thing doesn't work anymore for this for some reason, where we are only able to penetrate the tank on the lower frontal plate and the driver's part. The turret cheeks and the upper frontal plate is completely immune even to the more powerful DM33 found on the Batterating 11.0 Type 90. And finally, against a high explosive round, in this case the HE round fired by pretty much every Soviet tank, and it is only vulnerable around the turret ring, where that splash damage will splash through the hull's upper armour and into the crew compartment. So overall, the protection of the T-80UD is very good. As you've probably seen in the background footage, I bounce quite a lot of incoming rounds, even at point blank range. Enemies tend to panic and just shoot randomly, which usually leads to a bounce. But just be aware, if an enemy does know what they're doing and penetrates you, even from the front aspect, it's almost certainly going to lead to an ammo rack kill, sending your crew members back to the hangar in a very unpleasant deflagration, shall we say. Like the T-80U, the T-80UD uses the same 125mm 2A46 M1 gun. We start to see some more negatives about this vehicle, as we only have 5 degrees of gun depression. Another negative is the vertical targeting speed. This is how fast a gun can basically elevate and depress. At 4.4 degrees per second, if an enemy is above or below you, it can be incredibly hard to get that gun on target. Even the horizontal turret traverse rate isn't the best, only being 24 degrees per second with an ace crew, that is basically half the speed of the XM1 and pretty much every other NATO main battle tank. So like the mobility of the hull, the movement of the turret is also quite limited. But we do at least have the fantastic reload of the T-80 series of 6.5 seconds. This is 0.6 seconds faster than the T-72 versions, and it is faster than pretty much most NATO main battle tanks, as long as they don't have an ace crew. But considering a lot of 10.0 matches is now going to be facing the Type 90B, the newest 11.0 Japanese Premium that we covered in the last video, you aren't going to be able to compete with the 4 second autoloader. So just be very cautious whenever you are around the Japanese main battle tanks. The gunner's optics are pretty good though, with a base 2.7x zoom which I really like because it's not very tunnel visiony, and we also have an optional 12x zoom. So we've got a good base zoom and a fantastic sniping high power zoom. The commander's optics, which I don't really use, but I guess I'll cover it anyway. It is a base one time zoom and an optional eight time zoom. Unlike the bigger T-80U, the T-80UD does not get a thermal imager for either the commander or the gunner. The gunner does get night vision though, as well as the commander, but this isn't really a substitute for the thermal imager. And while it is a bit of a downside not having thermals, I don't think it's a deal breaker for 10.0, especially with the majority of the maps now not really being heavy foliage or rolling hills anymore. Most of the maps you are now face in War Thunder are like stupid street maps where you don't even need thermals whatsoever. So for 95% of the maps you'll be fighting on, you do not need thermal images. So again, not really a deal breaker in my opinion. But let's go on to the ammunition. Our stock round is a 3BK18M, this is a heater fest shell which can penetrate 550 millimeters of armor. It's a pretty good heater fest round, I'm not gonna lie. It does move quite slowly compared to NATO heater fest, but it's a stock shell. It doesn't cost anything to fire it, so we can't really complain. We also have the good old 30F26, the high explosive shell, which can penetrate over 40 millimeters of armor. This is great for killing Abrams and other light vehicles, especially by shooting at the roof. We then come on to the star of the show, which is the 3BM42 Mango. This travels incredibly fast at 1700 meters per second and can penetrate just under 460 millimeters of armor at point blank range. And even against armor angled at 60 degrees, it can penetrate 264 millimeters of armor. This means pretty much everything you will ever come across is an easy lol pen. And while it isn't as good as the 3BM46 found on the T80U, it is still a fantastic round for battle rating 10.0 the same round fired by the T-72 AV terms and no one has ever complained about the firepower of that tank. So should you buy the T-80UD? Well I'm going to say wait for a sale. 
not only because the price is incredibly high for what this tank is, but also because it is a little bit behind the meta. Having a tank that is slow but with good armor is about five years out of date at the minute, as we're seeing currently at battery rating 11.0, the spamming out of the T90B with basically no armor to speak of, but it is still doing incredibly well. So I don't really see the point in trying to go for like a more heavily armored main battle tank. It's kind of just dead weight. The mobility of the T80UD is a big letdown. It is nowhere near as good as the T80U. It's marginally better than the T72AV terms, but it's nowhere near as good as the 2S38, which arguably is the best premium currently in the rank 7 of the Soviet Tetri, despite itself having no armor whatsoever. While the survivability of the T80UD is a lot better than anything else at battery rating 10.0, it is easily countered if you know even slightly anything about the weak spots of Soviet tanks, mainly the lower frontal plate and the turret ring, but against some newer players or players that aren't really used to fighting the top tier Soviet main battle tanks, I could see it being quite a scurry opposition. The firepower of the T-80UD is decent but not amazing, it's the same as the T-72 AV terms, but compared to the terms it lacks any sort of thermal imager. This isn't a downside and the gun itself again isn't a negative, I'm not going to mark it down for that. But I don't think that this tank is well suited to advanced players in War Thunder. I think if you know what you're doing you can get a lot better results with the 2S38. If you're a newer player to War Thunder then absolutely the T80UD is by far a better pickup than the T72 AV terms. It's a lot more survivable with better mobility and the same gun, it just lacks that thermal imager. So if you're new to the game, by all means, this is a great buy on a sale. If you're really desperate for a grand for the Soviet Union, then I guess full price is fine. I wouldn't spend my money on that. You'd go and buy an ice cream or something, literally anything else. But the tank's good. It's just a little bit too slow for my personal liking. Anyway, lads, I'd like to say a big thank you to my YouTube producers, Lola Alphonse, Tans, Deboa LX, Dr. Bob, Tomster013, RS28 Sama, Schlunty, Van Haler, Diogenes, Econ, and Alan Hacker. Thank you very much for watching, lads. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave a comment saying Turbine. If you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member by pressing the join button. Check out the Discord server where I frequently squad up with my members and friends, and don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Thanks again for watching, lads, and I'll see you in the next video.